we've now talked about uh, the brain machine interface data that, that uh, we have access to. And now it's time to uh, do our first uh, bit of modeling in, in this area. All right, let's transition to our Jupyter lab uh, setup here. So I've uh, gone ahead, uh, we're still working in the same environment as before. So the data are already loaded up. And uh, one thing that I like to do in each of the examples is to be very explicit about what the uh, inputs are uh, to our model and what our expected outputs are going to be. So, so you'll see me define that for every model that we're learning. Uh, here we're pulling out uh, the position information. This is the zeroth column, which is the shoulder position. Our inputs uh, are coming from the, the fold zero as well for our uh, neural data. Scikit-learn has uh, built in a linear regression class that uh, performs this matrix inverse uh, approach to uh, solving for the parameters of a linear model. So that's the normal equation that we uh, talked about a couple of videos ago. And it subscribes to the standard uh, interface for our models. So we can explicitly tell our model to fit uh, a set of data and we provide uh, the inputs and the outputs and, and that's it and it goes to work. And now let's look at the predictions that our model is making. And let's look at the shape of, of the predictions. So remember, we're uh, predicting a, a scalar value. And there's one prediction for each of the 1193 samples. So here is some code to uh, do our plotting. We're going to plot uh, our ground truth uh, in red and our corresponding predictions in green. Let me execute that. And there is, uh, there's our result. Um, that's really hard to look at, so we're actually going to focus on a particular region here. So, sorry, we need two sets of parens. So we're looking at the 20 to, to 40 second range here. And, and what you'll see is that the green curve follows along the red curve pretty darn well. There are a few places where there's some, some errors, but uh, other than that, uh, it tends, tends to follow red pretty well. Um, one other thing to note is that there are certain places like, like in this region where the red curve is nice and smooth, but the green curve is, uh, is, is a little bit bumpy. It extends up a little bit right there. And then here, uh, even though red is staying relatively constant, green is sort of bouncing around. And, that, and that's not uh, uncommon for the way we've set this up, uh, but it is certainly undesirable in the long run. Uh, let's look at a couple of uh, metrics. Uh, we'll do a model.score. So that gives us a 0.96. So this is the correlation coefficient. So this is our uh, R uh, metric. Uh, so this, this measures how, how well uh, the ground truth and the predictions are, uh, are, are correlated with one another. Um, this is not my favorite uh, mechanism for, uh, for judging how well a model is doing. Uh, in particular, if we were to take the, the green curve and, uh, and scale it by a factor of two, visually, we, we would agree that that's not really a very good prediction of red, and yet uh, this, the, this uh, correlation coefficient metric would actually uh, still give us the same score. We'll, we'll talk about some other um, mechanisms here in just a second, but I did want to look inside of, uh, inside of the model. So for example, we can ask what the uh, bias term is. So there's, there's our bias. Um, we could also look at the individual coefficients, um, but there are 960 of those. Uh, let's just verify that. So there, there's our, that W uh, parameter there. 
All right, so let's go ahead and compute uh, mean squared error. Um, so I'll assign MSE to be equal to uh, the sum of the squares. And we want to tell the difference between our, the ground truth outputs and the predicted values. That, that gives us, this gives us some squared error. So we also need to uh, divide by the number of samples that we have. And that's, and that's just the, the zeroth component of the shape of outs. Oops. There we go. So mean squared error of 0.02, that's a little bit hard to uh, interpret. Uh, let's actually also compute root mean squared error. And ask what that value is. So the units of this are in terms of uh, radians and that in and of itself uh, for, for many of us is not necessarily easy to, uh, to interpret either. We don't have a good intuition for what a radian is, but uh, we can convert that over to degrees. All right, so we have a root mean squared error on the order of 2.6 degrees. And, and that actually is, uh, is quite good. I'm going to go ahead and define a function uh, to do all that for us. So we'll, we'll be making use of this uh, a bunch. So we're going to compute the MSC and, uh, and then the RMSE. And we're going to return uh, three items, MSE, RMSE, and, and our conversion over to uh, degrees. And th this turns out to work uh, whether we are working in uh, radians or radians per second. So this will work for both our position and our velocities. Okay, so the next uh, obvious question is how does this do with data that we haven't used for the training process. So let's test uh, with uh, an independent fold and give me one second to pull out, to pull up the code for that. All right, so we're, we're pulling out uh, inputs and desired outputs from fold one now, uh, as well as uh, the, the timestamp information uh, for, for that fold. And then the final step, we're actually asking the model that we've already learned to make some predictions given the set of inputs. And now we can ask uh, my eval how, uh, how well we're doing. So outs two and prim two. So this is uh, MSE, this is RMSE, and this is RMSE in degrees. And we've gone now from a, uh, a two uh, degree error up to a 13.5 degree error. And that may not seem like a lot, but it is a pretty substantial uh, bump up in terms of error. So now let's uh, actually plot the result here. So looking at these metrics is quite informative, but it's again, it's really important to make sure that you're getting into the data and getting an intuition as to how well your models are doing. Uh, what I've left off is that I'm referring to the wrong uh, vectors for time. There we go. And in fact, let's, let's zoom in a little bit more here. So let's do 170 to, to 180. Okay, so this, is, this picture is quite a bit different than what we uh, saw before. If we squint, uh, then the green is not, is sort of following the trend of uh, red, but from a sample by sample uh, perspective, green is actually not doing a very good job of predicting uh, what uh, red is doing. And, and in particular, we're, we're seeing a lot of 
uh, jumps up and down uh, around what what red uh, what red is. So, so this is a, a very uh, large problem. We've learned this model given our uh, given one fold of our data set, and uh, and now we've asked the model to uh, to make predictions about another fold. Uh, it's not too far distant in time, but it is a, an independent uh, data set, and uh, it is not generalizing very well. And this this is uh, definitely a problem. Okay, so so this issue of not generalizing well, this is something that we it's really important for us to address, and there are a variety of different solutions. Uh, one is to start making use of other kinds of models, uh, and in particular, there's some models where we can uh, ask for it to be more conservative about how it chooses its parameters, and, and we'll get to that here in uh, another few videos. Uh, another possibility is that maybe we don't quite have the training data that we need. Uh, so we have uh, 960 parameters uh, for our weights, plus we have one bias of 961 parameters, and our training set size is 1193 in, uh, in length. Uh, and trying to nail down that many parameters with such a small data set uh, is actually uh, very hard to do. So, so this is part of our issue. We're, we're overfitting our, our data. So we'll look at that here in, in a moment, um, but before we uh, take that step, I, I did want to uh, also look at building a model around velocity prediction rather than position prediction. All right, I've set up the, the, uh, the problem, the prediction problem. I'm pulling again from fold zero. Uh, the inputs are the same as the first model that we constructed, uh, but what's different is now we're pulling out the velocity uh, for the shoulder uh, from this uh, from this first fold, building a, a new model, fitting it, and then asking how well that model does on the prediction with respect to the data that it's already been trained on. So I'm going to go ahead and execute that, and now let's work on uh, visualizing that. We can edit out. Here's the code for for uh, generating the visualization. The difference is that we are looking at velocities, so it's radians per second, and, and there we are. So the, the story is actually uh, very similar to what we saw with uh, position. The, the predictions match the, uh, the ground truth quite well. We do have a few scenarios where, where the predictions undershoot. Uh, here's a case where the prediction overshoots a little bit. Um, and then there's this constant region here where there isn't much velocity, and yet, uh, and yet the uh, predictions are bouncing around a little bit. So there are a few undesirables there. Let's go ahead and look at how this translates to a, a novel data set. Here's the code for extracting out the data that we need for uh, velocity for a different fold. And then we're given the neural data, we're making some predictions using the model that we just learned. You can look at the evaluation. Actually, let's look at the evaluation from the previous case. So we're going to look at out4 and pred4. Oops, outs4. So, so our errors were on the order our, our root mean squared error was nine degrees per second. And now let's look at uh, evaluation for this novel data set. So, that, so data set four was uh, data that we trained the model on. And you'll see that we have a pretty substantial jump in the uh, in, in the error. So now we're at uh, 48 uh, degrees per second uh, errors. Let's see what that looks like uh, visually here. So, so here is uh, second 170 to second 180. And again, you'll see that uh, green is capturing a bit of the trend of, of red, the ground truth, but, it, uh, but there is a lot of high frequency noise uh, in, in the predictions. And that's for when we're actually thinking about trying to control a prosthesis, 
that's uh, quite unacceptable. This is our first attempt at building some models with the brain machine interface uh, data set. Uh, we, we were trying a very simple problem of training up the data with us, the training up the models with very small data and then asking how well it generalizes. And, and what we saw is that uh, generalization is not all that good at this point in time. Uh, we were using the, uh, the linear regression um, mechanism that's built into scikit-learn that is solving for your parameters uh, using the direct method. So uh, next up, we're going to look at using a gradient descent method. Uh, uh, and then we'll start talking about ways to make our models more robust. So that's coming soon.